Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. So today I finally wanted to just sit down and make a video on my experience hiking Mount Whitney, what I learned, everything like that. I've been putting off making this for a long time. I did Whitney about a month and a half ago and I've just really been trying to figure out how to break up this video and talk about the things I want to talk about without it being an hour long. This is really just going to be my experience, what I learned doing this. I'm not going to cover training and all that because that's its own separate video in itself. So for starters, if you're sitting there thinking, what the heck is Mount Whitney? What is she talking about? Mount Whitney is the tallest mountain in the continental US at 14,500 feet tall with an elevation gain of 6,100 feet and 22 miles round trip. So. There's two ways to go about this. You can do it as an overnight hike or also do it as a day hike. You have to get permits for both of these, which is probably why it took me so long to do this mountain because it's hard to obtain permits for this. And I just, I've been wanting to do this for a couple of years. I know if you guys have watched me for a minute now, you probably saw a video I probably did about two years ago saying, you know, I want to climb or hike Mount Winnie, blah, blah, blah. I ended up doing this as a day hike, which really is its own accomplishment in itself with that because it's, it's just a lot to take in, in a day. Also, just as a disclaimer, Whitney is definitely not a walk in the park. It is a difficult hike. Um, if you are not used to hiking at elevation, I definitely think you should, you know, expose yourself to something like that first before you commit to Whitney. You need to train properly. Whitney is the kind of mountain where you need to be in top, you know, physical shape for something like this. And it's really how I train too because I didn't want to be just in you know, great shape. I want it to be above and beyond kind of in shape because you want this to be a great experience. You don't want to be miserable doing this. So that was kind of my mindset going into this. And so that was really my mindset with all this. I wanted to be in absolute top physical shape for this to be able to know the cardio's in the bag. I just have to face the altitude. So definitely if you've never dealt with altitude before, you need to introduce yourself to that. You really need to do some hikes that are at 10,000 or above to kind of get introduced to that and see what that feels like. But I will say with that, in that 10 to 12,000 feet range, you enter the 14er range and it's its own realm, it really is. Everything is different, your body reacts differently, processes differently, and just responds not as it would at 10,000 feet. So it's definitely something to learn, and it's a learning experience. With all that being said, don't attempt Whitney unless you have fully trained for this mountain, you have researched it to no end, and you feel like you have a good understanding of what's to come. Um, like I said, it's not, it's not anything to play around with, this is, you know, 14,000 feet, you have different layers of this, you have, you know, the cardio aspect of it, as well as the elevation. And I know when I did this, you can really see the elevation and cardio start weeding people out of this. So it's not something you want to take lightly and just think, oh, tomorrow I'm going to go do this, because you really want to make sure you were prepared for this. With that whole intro done, let's get into the video and let me tell you about my experience and everything I learned doing this. If you guys don't like these long sit down videos of me talking, this probably is not the video you should be watching. You should probably skip because this is all this is going to be is me talking. But I did this as a day hike. So my friend and I, we got down to Lone Pine, which is where Whitney's out of, um, on a Sunday. We were going to summit on a Tuesday. And we did this because we wanted to acclimate. This is the first hurdle we came across was acclimating or sleep. And this is something I also heard from a lot of the other hikers that were having a lot of difficulty with this, is trying to figure out what they should do. Both are equally important. Um, for me personally, I we just chose to do acclimating because we wanted to really, we wanted to be acclimated. We didn't want there to be any hiccups because we knew our cardio was definitely there. We were fine, we had that in the bag, but we want, really wanted to make sure the altitude would not be an issue. There's a previous video on my channel where I did White Mountain Peak, which is a great learning. It's a very easy 14er. Easy in the sense of it's 15 miles long and you don't have that much elevation gain. So you can kind of experience what a 14er is all about. You still, I will say, you don't get the absolute full experience, but you do see what a 14er is. Um, how it feels, but it still is a little bit different going from Whitney exerting energy at that level of altitude for so long. It's a little bit different than White Mountain Peak, but it's definitely a great mountain to do. Like I mentioned in my video, that was one that I didn't acclimate for because I just wanted to see the threshold, like my natural, like naturally what I can take with altitude. Of course, this all depends on 
how what you do to your body how you prep yourself because your experience can drastically change with altitude so many factors go into that but great training mounts just so you can take away some learnings from it and adapt it into what Karen and I we ended up acclimating over at Horseshoe Meadows Horseshoe Meadows is a great place you can drive up the mountain and you get to 10,000 feet just driving so that was really important for me because I told my friend, I was like, I am not doing any kind of hiking to acclimate. I am not exerting any energy until I do Whitney. I highly recommend doing Horseshoe Meadows just to acclimate at 10,000 feet. So that's what we did. We ended up camping. I don't sleep well while I'm camping. So probably from Sunday till Tuesday, I got about four hours total, which was just disastrous and it sucked. Um, but from there, we went on to Whitney Portal and the problem with doing it in a day is you can't sleep during the day. It's very difficult and you just have pretty much that whole day where you're not sleeping and you lose out on a day's sleep because you have to start so early in the morning. Another thing we went when there was a lot of people on the trail, we did this on August 21st or 22nd it was. It was pretty busy that day and so there's a lot of people coming off the mountain and sitting at Whitney Portal all day, you just heard a lot of different things and so it kind of made us really nervous because there was a lot of people just talking about how difficult it was. One girl, her like feet were like shredded up from like blisters, it was just awful and you know, it's just a lot of stuff you hear and then we heard people talking about, you know, people that do this in a day are insane, blah blah blah, and it was just things that were making us more and more nervous where when it hit 12 o'clock, that's when the permits kick in. My friend and I were like, let's go, let's get out of here because we're, we're so nervous at this point because we've been hearing all these people talk all day about this coming down that we just want to get this over with at this point. Alright guys, here we go, we're starting our Whitney journey at midnight. I had also had friends that had previously hiked it telling me that it would be very difficult in a day, that it would be doable but it would be extremely, extremely, extremely hard. And that was just kind of nerve wracking hearing all that. So my friend and I, we started out at 12.30 in the morning. Another thing that I found out about this, which was really weird guys, so many people told me that it wasn't that rocky, which is just like haha. It's, it sounds so stupid because the Sierra, Sierra Nevada mountains are extremely rocky. It's just a very rocky terrain out there and the fact that people felt that this wasn't that rocky is weird to me. But it starts out really good and you're thinking, this trail's great. This is a really nice, well-maintained trail and then, you know, you're probably like four miles in and things drastically change and you start realizing, all right, things are getting a little bit different now. The vegetation starts going away and you really run into all the rocks. And from that point up, it's mostly, you're, you feel like you're doing step ups the whole way up this mountain. And that's when really leg muscle comes into such great play. I am an avid mountain biker, as you guys know, and I cannot say enough things about how mountain biking really helped me out truly with this because my legs, when I got off that mountain later in the day, guys, my legs were not tired. My legs didn't cramp once. My legs just kept going, and I've never understood the phrase of, you know how you'll hear, hear people say, like, you know, let, let your legs carry you or let your legs do all the work? That just always sounded really stupid to me, but it wasn't until I did this hike I really understood the meaning because my legs can just keep going and going and going and I'm fine. That was when I realized it was going to be pretty strenuous and then we're hiking all this way in the dark. It's cold. We're, we're pretty fortunate though because that day the weather was absolutely perfect. The wind wasn't bad when this, once the sun rose, the wind kind of died down. In the morning it was a little windy. It was just freezing that was my biggest struggle was I couldn't put on my down jacket because it was just way too hot but I also was freezing to death without it and so it was just you know my sweater wasn't enough and it was just kind of a, a vicious cycle there but as long as I kept moving I was fine but it was very very cold and I remember that really wishing I just had a few hours of sleep because I was so exhausted of course not from the hike itself but just not having any sleep this whole time it was really really difficult so right as the Sun started to rise my friend and I we finally hit the switchbacks and that I think this whole hike this whole hike when I tell people how it was I tell everyone that it's half physical and half mental because I say that because you look at other mountains like Mount Rainier or something like that and you see this 14er in all its glory you see it you know and you take Whitney and I feel like Sahara Nevada the mountain range is so giant that it kind of camouflages the fact of just how massive Whitney is because you haven't you know what I forget what mountain it is right next to it 
you know, that's 14,000 feet itself. And then you also have, you know, 13, 13,000 foot mountains around it. And there's just so many high mountains around Whitney where it really does camouflage the fact that Whitney is a giant. So as we got to the switchbacks, you realize, are you kidding me? Because you just see these little headlamps going up the mountain and you're like, wow, that's really, that's far. That's really, really far. And sitting here freezing. That's when it really starts becoming a mental thing because you're like, you're thinking, you see these mountains just towering over you and you're like, I am not even like beginning to get here because I'm just at the foothill of this mountain. So when you've been hiking, you know, for a minute and you just realize I am nowhere near this. The switchbacks are known as like the infamous 99 switchbacks. They are... This is where most people say they found it the hardest was on the switchbacks. I personally don't know if I would say that was the hardest. I think it's the hardest because they just seem never ending. They just go go on and go on and you feel like you're not making any progress whatsoever because you're just slowly going up because there's so many of them, so many switchbacks that you just feel like you're not making any progress. You're also going from 11,000 feet to over 13,000 feet in that span. So. There's a lot going on and this is where I saw really the mountain just weeding a lot of people off of it because this is where everyone was like, I can't do it, I'm turning around. It was either the cardio, they just realized this is way more than they were cut out for, or the elevation was starting to hit people. Um, so for me, I didn't have any elevation sickness, any issues like that, but for me, just naturally, at elevation, once I hit elevation, I just get really slow. So we started to slow down. So my friend and I, like our whole outlook on this was, we are not doing this to figure out our best time. We weren't in it for the time aspect. We really wanted to take our time, enjoy the experience, and get up the mountain safely. We weren't trying to make some record time or anything like that. And also, when you are pushing yourself harder and harder, you are more prone to elevation altitude sickness I will say that so we were we weren't you know we this is the first time we we're doing Whitney we're like we're, we're just taking it easy we're just we're gonna enjoy this moment like this is something we've been training for we're going to enjoy the hike um, so and then we also pushed ourselves to every five switchbacks we would stop take a sip of water break for like 10 seconds and then start again and you know that was something we were just constantly reminding each other like sometimes I'm like no 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 just keep going through he's like no 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 we're stopping for, you know our 10 seconds or whatever it was and taking our water and then we will continue so it was just having those rules in place that we set for ourselves to really set the pace and just not to try to overdo ourselves on this when we finally got up to the saddle it was you realize that you realize you're only halfway there and this is just it's crazy it's absolutely crazy to me um, you realize you're halfway and as we started making our way, you're having to traverse around the mountains. The terrain gets worse and worse, I feel like, because you soon realize you're just walking over these boulders that you're having to go over. And it's just, Whitney's one of those trails where, you know, you can go, say for instance, what's a good one? San Bernardino Mountain, San Bernardino Peak. I absolutely love that mountain. I think it is a beautiful trail. It is probably one of my favorite hikes that I've done to date because you walk, you know, you just hike and you don't have to worry about your foot placement or anything like that. It's kind of like a mindless thing where you just go. And Whitney is definitely not that. You have to be aware. It's a lot of, you have to, it's one of those things, if you understand what I'm saying, you have to be aware of your footing and you just can't just mindlessly hike. You know, it's not that kind of situation. But as we were hiking further and further, there was a girl, we were like, oh, how much further do we have? And she's like, oh my God, as you go around this mountain right here, you'll be able to see Whitney. I'm like, oh, finally, you know, here it is. We'll be able to see it. And guys, I get around there and that this is where, I think this is where it became very difficult. And this is probably the hardest trail for me personally was once we were able to really fully see the summit house. And I've heard this is kind of different for everyone. This is a lot of people's kind of wall that they hit. Um, it's either the switchbacks or this specific part, like the last two miles. And for me, I really think it was the last two miles because 
it's so far guys it is so far you see this itty bitty speck on this like mountain up and you're like i still have to do that like are you kidding me and it's just it is such a mental block because you're just thinking like oh my god this is insanity and so you keep going and at this point the last two miles the terrain is not great it is we had to traverse up some snow and um, for this we actually I ditched my micro spikes I didn't bring them because I didn't want the extra weight I mean they don't weigh anything anyways but people coming down the mountain were telling us trekking poles are sufficient enough you don't need to worry about micro spikes Making our way up to the summit is the last final stretch. We came from all the way over there, that little mountain. And all the way around. It's been a day, guys. Which we found to be true, thankfully. So, yeah, that last push was. But I will say within those two miles, you're at 14,000 feet at that point. And the biggest thing is, it's an interesting experience I had because your body, you really, you feel like you're more in tune with your body, if that makes any sense. It's probably, I'm probably talking crazy to some people, but I've just never had this experience where I truly realize everything that I'm putting into my body makes a huge difference. and. This hike is kind of like taking care of a supercar. You know, your body is a supercar. And I was taking hydration tablets along with vitamin tablets, switching those back and forth along with like my camelback, you know, drinking water from that. Um, you dehydrate really, really easily at high elevation. And so that was something interesting I found that, and this is something I previously had known, but it was just difficult to have to remind myself I need to keep drinking even though I don't feel thirsty I am dehydrated and I have to keep drinking and it was just such an unnatural thing to me um, and just weird and then I think the best way to explain this is you know when some people tell you oh you should eat this and this and this it'll make you feel better and you know you'll start to really see a difference and that might take two to three weeks to see the difference in you know the diet or whatever you're doing to see the change but when you're at altitude like that you can really feel things instantly so you know food that I was putting into my body it's almost like when your car hits E you just come to a standstill and that's the same when you're at that kind of altitude like that and your body burns through all the calories you just kind of like whoa I can't continue until I eat something it's just like an immediate reaction that you have and also another thing that I found really difficult was to eat when you're that high up. It's This is something that I heard a lot of other people are having issues with too and I found it to be true for myself too. Things don't taste right. Like just your cravings, everything that you, when you were at sea level, were like, oh, this will be yummy. No, I was like, no, I had, I packed energy gels, I packed, you know, what did I pack? Protein bars, numerous protein bars, pasta, all that was disgusting to me. The only saving grace I had was cashews. That was the only thing I could eat, and I thought, this is pretty good. But everything else, protein bars, I kid you not, that would take me five minutes to eat because it was so awful for me to eat this disgusting protein bar. And it wasn't the fact, I wasn't, I didn't have altitude sickness or anything like that. It was just, I didn't want it. I wasn't hungry. And it's a weird sensation because you have to force feed yourself at that point because you do need this food to keep going. So that was something that I really, probably one of the biggest learnings that I found out with this hike was just how your body is once you're that high up things are just very different and i've never had that experience before you know even doing 
quite Mountain Peak, I think it's because it's, it's a different kind of hike. You know, you're not doing 22 miles, it's 15 miles, and you're not exerting as much energy. So things are just different. You know, I wasn't eating that much. I didn't need food like that on that hike. But Whitney was just a different situation because, you know, you're hiking all throughout the early morning until the sun comes up and you know and into the early afternoon and so it, just, it was just a completely different experience having that also I will say to you a lot of people ask about how difficult is it to breathe up there I will say if you acclimate properly beforehand you know maybe two days have two days to acc acclimate Lacey come come Hoof. come meet you oh how sweet how sweet I, I will say by giving yourself, you know, at least two days to acclimate before you do Whitney, it's a it's a different experience. I didn't have any trouble at all breathing that high up. Um, my breathing felt normal. Everything was fine. You know, it, it was fine. <laughs> Without acclimating, I think it is a little bit of a different situation. Um, you might need to take, you know, altitude sickness pills for that to really prevent that if you don't, if you aren't given the time to be able to acclimate properly. Um, that's definitely probably something you want to do because without that, it's not going to be a fun time. It's going to be very difficult. Um, so without. I just thought I would answer probably some of the most common questions that I have seen people asking um, and maybe this can help other people that are just kind of curious. I wanted to make this video too because Things like this, videos like this really helped me when I was prepping for Whitney. It's just nice to hear everyone's perspective on it, what they went through. But like I said, you know, we had just absolute perfect conditions for this hike because I can make a whole separate video on gear and everything like that, but I was really, really ready for the absolute worst. I had packed everything. I think I got my pack down to 21 pounds, which was great, especially I'm doing this in a day, so I didn't have to have like, you know, a 50 pound pack because I'm not carrying all the extra gear, but my pack was 21 pounds and that was one of the best things I could say, and again, this is like a whole separate video, but um, I, I just trained, I trained a lot with carrying a heavy backpack on my back and that really helped me a lot with prepping myself for to carry you know weight on my back so one of the most common questions a lot of people ask is how long does it take to do Mount Whitney so this really differs from person to person if you are a mountaineer and you are really used to elevation like this or maybe you live at elevation it's probably a completely different ball game so this can take someone you know 10 hours to complete if you're used to the elevation you can move a lot quicker and you can just power through all this stuff. You know, so it's it's anywhere from like 14 to 10 hours. We did it in 14 hours. Like I said, we weren't trying to beat a record or try to like do best time or anything like that. Maybe if I do it again, I'll try to uh, focus on time more, but for my first time doing this, that wasn't something I was set out to do is try to break some, you know, try to do it in a, under a certain certain amount of time. But yeah, it just really depends on person to person and the altitude is a huge factor to it. Um, like I said, if you're used to being at elevation like that, if you come from somewhere like Colorado where you live, you know, this is going to be a lot easier on you because you're used to being that high up. So it really just depends. This was one that a lot of people asked me and they asked me how hard was it? Did I have to train for this? Which I was like, yeah, I had to train. Uh, because everyone knows I do a lot of mountain biking so I'm just kind of you know already naturally in shape but yeah um, Whitney is hands down of course the hardest hike I've ever done a lot of people like to c compare Whitney to San Gorgonio which I think is my friend and I were laughing when we were doing Whitney because we're like, this is a joke like this is in no way comparable to San Gorgonio but I think it's San Gorgonio is a good mountain to do to kind of get an idea of where you are in your level of fitness to see if you could handle a mountain like Whitney if you come off San Gorgonio going that was really really hard then you probably are not ready for Whitney but if you come off of it saying you know that wasn't too bad yeah then you know it's a good indicator of okay maybe you're ready for Whitney um, but in no way are those comparable by any means in my eyes because there's there's so many different factors San Gorgonio is you know a little little over 11,000 feet so elevation is you know I, you're not even really getting a good dose of elevation at that point at least you know for me like like I said like a 14er is its own realm when it comes to elevation so it's just it's like a night night and day difference really um, yeah you're at elevation but it's not the same as 14,000 something feet so yeah Whitney Whitney's very difficult um, especially if you do it in a day it's I feel very proud <laughs> of myself it's 
it's difficult. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what else to say about that. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. And the scary thing about Whitney is there's a lot of hikes in California where you have just numerous opinions about what people think about it and the difficulty of it. And Whitney is one mountain that always has the same response, and that is, it's hard. It's very difficult. People come up this mountain really having this eye-opening experience, and it's hard it's not it, like i said it's not a walk in the park and you know there's so many fatalities that happen on this mountain like i think there's already been like three this year unfortunately and it's really sad and it's just you know when once you start climbing it and you you know really you start getting up there at that halfway point you realize how this becomes very treacherous and how dangerous this mountain can become and yeah, you know, you're in the backcountry, you're out there so far away from everything, and it's just, it is, it's an eye-opening experience, I feel like, and you realize things can, can definitely happen, so it's in no means a walk through the park whatsoever. It is, it is difficult to do. The next one is, is Mount Whitney Dangerous, and this is kind of a interesting question to you answer because, yes, it is. I feel like, of course, in the winter, the danger aspect of this mountain is, it, it changes the mountain. It becomes a mountain to a mountaineer's mountain in the winter. It is. It becomes very, very dangerous. And this is where a lot of people are injured. You know, there's a lot of people that are injured in the summer too, but, you know, this is where a lot of, you know, deaths, unfortunately, occur is in the winter because, you know, you see a mountain like Whitney and with no snow and then you just imagine it with snow and you can only imagine and so it just you know you understand how dangerous this could get um but even when there's no snow you know you have a lot of boulders and you know this is how a lot of people got hurt this year was you know boulders coming down getting hit um there's just there's a lot of things so it's it's not a you know a safe mountain but you know, if you are well prepared and really take care of yourself and are aware of the mountain and its ever-changing effects and things that can happen and can go wrong and you're just really prepared for everything as, as much as you can be, then, you know, it'll, it'll help you out a lot. A lot of people I know ask what you need to do, Whitney. This really differs because it, de it depends on what time of year you're doing this. Um, if you're doing it in the winter, there, there's a lot of gear that's needed. Um, if you're doing this in the summer, it's good to take a lot of gear, still. Um, rain, rain jackets, down jackets, waterproof hiking pants, I mean I had everything. I had insulated underwear with me as well. I just had everything possibly that, you know, if something went wrong, I would have myself covered because things can drastically change once you're that high up. I know one of my friends just did it, you know maybe like two weeks or a week after that we did it and his experience his experience was completely different it was pouring down rain they had high winds it was it was hailing it was snowing he said it was absolutely miserable and it was freezing and so his experience was just completely different than mine so it really really just depends you have to keep an eye on the weather to see what's brewing but it's good just to be prepared for everything because the weather, like I said, can just change in the blink of an eye. So it's good just to have everything just in case. Anyways, that's about it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm sorry this was super long, but there's just, I feel like, so much to talk about. And still, even saying all this, you know, there's so much, there's just so much more. Um, it was an amazing experience, though. I, it was just such a cool experience to do. And, you know, like I said, it's been a mountain that I've been wanting to do for a really, really long time. And, once I got to the top, I just was kind of overwhelmed with emotion, and I'm not an emotional person whatsoever, but that mountain did things to me, and I don't know why it was such an emotional thing for me, but I have no idea. But um, it was it was really an amazing experience, and it's really awesome just to see what all your body's capable of doing when you just put in some work, you know? Um, <laughs> And it was really interesting. I, I visited the Canadian, Canadian Rockies a couple of weeks ago, and that mountain range is drastically a lot smaller than the Sierra Nevadas. And it was just so interesting to see these mountains that looked large, but you knew they were only nine, ten thousand feet when Whitney was so much bigger than all these. It just like really, it was eye opening and just put things into perspective and just made me feel like, wow, I did this massive mountain. <laughs> but, anyways. Let me know if you guys like this video. Let me know if you guys would like to see any more videos around Whitney. Maybe what I packed 
or how I train for this. Like I said, those are completely separate videos. Training alone is like, yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. But let me know if you guys would like to see those, and I will see you guys in my next video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and bye!